You know, I do miss doing this live with you guys, with Marissa on a Monday at five. But our, our schedules are crazy. It's life. Life got in the way. I'm James Lott Jr. This is my reaction. This episode five of season nine. I have my Hardy shirt on. I have my Hardy's mug. We turned the right way. I can't even see it. I'm, this, this lighting is horrible. This mug for years. It's first thing in the morning. I'm trying to have my coffee. And I'm like, did I put enough sugar in it? Sorry, I'm going to stir my coffee. But good morning. I saw my hair is in a cap. You guys are family. I have a lot of hair. So we're hiding it. We're going to hide it a little bit. Thank you to all the Hardy's Facebook groups, which is two of you, that let me post this in there. And you guys share your opinions with me. I enjoy that very much. And online, on Twitter and Instagram. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I love I love doing the recaps, no matter whether I'm with Mr. or not, or we do it at nighttime or live. I love giving my reactions. I'm watching the show. I'm a Hardy. That ain't, that ain't changing anytime soon. I'm a Hardy. And, and those of you who are asking, we will start having guests, more guests on the show this season. Um, it just, I wanted to wait for the season to actually happen and actually have some story. It makes it easier to interview. A little behind the scenes. To interview, I interview people and go, okay, well, let's talk about the storyline. And so we're going to have, we're going to have that. So that's going to happen. We're going to work on that. Um, this is another episode I really enjoyed. I felt like as much as I see the show seemingly expand and change, you can tell by the town, it's all more cars and more people. You can, you can just tell. And that attention to detail is really good, you guys. I like the attention to detail to the staff of When Calls to Heart. You can tell it's, it's getting bigger. Um, but it's also, this episode was very much like old time, you know, long time um, When Calls to Heart fam. It hit me in places that were wonderful and sweet. Um, and you can see like lots of the town. I love is this something this, okay? So there's a thing they call foreground and background crosses. I used to be a background actor. Um, and it's 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 in terms of what how you cross the camera. And and I'm noticing this season a lot more. I did a little bit last season too, where the scenes are almost con seemingly continuous. Like they'll have two people talking in the middle of Times Square, Times Square. <laughs> I wish I was in New York right now. Town Square. Um, sorry, my my laptop. Um, and one character will leave and walk in front of two characters talking already. And that scene starts, or one character will walk into a scene, talk to two actors. I need to talk to you for a second. Okay, that person goes off. They keep. They walk off. They continue the conversation. It's like I love the way this. I love the kind of that fluid style is kind of happening on. I'm seeing on the show where it's like it's a big town. And people come in and out of, of scenes. You talk and you continue. And I like that. Again, we're also seeing a variety of folks uh, on the show. It's, it is giving us more of that town feeling. Uh, I was going to ask you all, and then it got actually got addressed on the show. <laughs> As a person who wears a goatee, I wear facial hair. Um, I have not had facial hair also, and folks, some folks like me that way also, um, but I, people seem to like me with this more. You can tell me if you like it or not, I don't know. But I was going to ask you if we like Nathan's mustache, because it's been on this whole season. We're like, uh, do we like it? Are we, are we liking it? Are we like okay with it? And then when Allie brought it up, that made me laugh. I chortled out loud. I said, oh my goodness. And then when he shaved it off, you're like, okay, some people, some, again, I'm a face, facial hair wearer. Sometimes some people just look good, clean shaven. They just do. And some folks look better with facial hair. So it just, it's one of those, one of those things us men have to go through. And there's someone out there who can't grow facial hair. And I always tell people, I'm so sorry. I have no problem growing hair, period. <laughs> so uh, that's the men have, that's, that's our, that's our sore spot is hair. Whether we have too much of it or too little of it, that's the one thing men have that may be different than, than, than women have their things. But men, one of the things you would hit us hard a lot of times, it is with hair. And fortunately for me, or unfortunately for me, I can grow hair, face hair. I have hair everywhere, so I don't. But none of my arms. Which is really weird. I have none of my arms and legs, but I have hair everywhere else. I know about my hair raising story. Uh, so that was actually funny. I was going to ask you that question. They totally addressed it, so now he's back to the way he was. Um, that little reveal to, to Mesu was cute. Was cute. 
little Jack is growing up. And um, and I'm glad that they're showing us pieces of, I know he's you know, it's a child and child actors don't work really that, that much. But, it's, but, but he is, a we call in soaps, a legacy character. He was born out of two legacy characters, which are Jack and Elizabeth. So we have to see his growth and see him. And he's getting more speaking lines and we have, we have to see this. And it's, it's very cute um, to see, watch him grow up. Um, and I loved later um, bringing up Jack. Jack is still an ever presence there as he should be um, in some form. Um, when Sergeant bowed and he said, and they was like, how'd you teach, who taught Sergeant how to bow? And I was like, Jack did. And I just think that's, it's, that's it's like that's how life works. You you really have to move on. Um, there are things that will never erase, never erase that person. Never will never erase that person. Um, but I just thought that was great. I always like the character Allie because she is a wild card. She is hilarious. Um, she is forceful and feisty. Um, she likes her son Robert. Watch out, Jamin, on the show. Of course, not in real life. Um, but I think I just I like that she's just. She's who she is, but she isn't, which I'm glad that they're, they're showing she's a young lady at a crossroads. And I think the scene that I liked the most, which is very when calls to heart, very next generation, um, was when Faith and uh, May Sue were talking to her. May Sue were talking to her because she wanted to get Robert's attention. Again, great messy. So folks, okay, I, you know, I'm a little shady sometimes. I don't care, but I'm going to say this. For all the folks who claimed they were going to watch the show anymore, I'm hoping they were just, they came back because they can't help themselves because there is, the show has, forget the triangle or whatever that was going on there. The show has great messaging. The show still nine seasons in has great messaging. I, I wouldn't mind my little girl, my teenager seeing this and him telling him, you don't need lots of makeup. You don't need all this outer, you don't focus on the outer. So there's a great message because naturally she's, she's, Allie's looking up to these women who look beautiful and she's thinking, I got to do this. I got to put all this stuff on to make Robert notice me. Boys, we're, 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 we're dumb. We're just, we're young. We don't know what's going on. We, you guys, women go, are developed faster than we do. You have to knock us over the head sometimes, get you, you know, get our attention. So, but I love that. They gave the message of no, don't try to change all this outer stuff to get somebody. It's about being on who you are on the inside. Um, and I kind of like that they're kind of trying to set that up a little bit of this very, very young uh, couple, which could be could be, could be fun. Could be totally fun. We love Javen here at, at When Calls Art After Show. And he, he's funny as Robert. Uh, his when he saw <laughs> he saw Lucas and and um was McKissy with the mail, it made me laugh. Um, but I love that. I love that we're seeing Allie coming to her own, calling Nathan dad instead of uncle. That was a bad, I didn't see that coming. But that was great. But whatever, whatever scene she's in, she just kind of just like charges every scene she's in. That actress is so, it's, it's so good. Um, now, you know, my girl, my forever crush. Um, um, Pascal Hutton, of course, who plays Rosemary. The Rosemary Lee thing, here's what I, and I've been talking about this for years too on the show. The show also manages, when it's good, to showcase a story that can be related to today. I, I call them you know, evergreen stories. Something that, that happens that totally makes sense and it can be relatable anywhere. And that is the when you start working together. So you're married, in today's world, it could be partnership together, whatever. But you're 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 together in a love relationship. You live together, and then you work together, and what that could mean, um, and on your relationship. That's very realistic. That's uh, that's timeless, and and it's funny that they both kind of you know, of course, you had a little misunderstandings and kind of what was going on because Lee's being so secretive, and she finds that poem. But I what I liked is that they. They did talk about it a little bit. And before he could even get into it, he revealed what he was doing. And I'll tell you, I got a little teary-eyed. I had to say, I did, because I'm a sucker. I'm a sucker for stuff like this. Um, big softy. Um, I love that he built the chair so that the opposite 
but they're together. The chairs are together. They're the also she can watch one thing she loves watching, and he likes watching the hills. I and then they recited the poem together. I was like tears coming out my eyes. I I just I can't help it. I can't help it. I like I was sucking for stuff like that. I think that's because it wasn't just about being romantic. It was like he loves her, and he was trying to build these chairs. And Joseph, of course, helped. And when she said the last time I sat in a chair, I laughed. Great use of history. That was pretty funny. Um, but it was like that he was just trying to do something nice for her, and he was the one who was saying we should make time for each other outside of work. Um, and that's you think, but Rosemary also had me laugh when she was like I'm talking to Elizabeth. Well, you know, I'm very delightful. And I mean, I mean, I understand. I, mean, I just I and Elizabeth just looks, I love Rosemary is hilarious. I mean, I mean, maybe I relate to her because I'm kind of like that crazy friend who just who's there for you, but I'm just I just I got a big personality, if you didn't notice that already, after nine years of me doing this with you guys, or nine seasons of you guys doing with you guys. Uh, but great storyline, and a great, another great message. Another great message that you have communication is key. And when it comes to working together, and I'm an entrepreneur, so I understand how this is. Um, and I have friendships that I work, people I collaborate with, that we're the same thing. We got, we got, we got to have time to have, just have friendship. Um, there's, you have to separate it, so that was really good. As the paper's trying to grow, we have that going on too. Um, and then, you know, one, and Fiona's back. We love her. I'm so confused with all this oil stuff. So I guess, I think next, so apparently next episode is going to be all about that. So we'll get clarification on that. So I'm like, okay, her and Gowan got into it. And there's something going on with him. Just, you know, Bill and Hickam provided comedy because Bill's had a really hard time with this whole thing about being mayor, but he's trying to foreshadow that. Some he's got that the mayor will not be easy right now as this town is changing. Um, um, so I'm really curious how this is going to really affect Hickam. Actually, uh, this is going to be a very interesting storyline. Um, let me see, I'm trying to get the little the smaller ones first. Um, let's see, uh, yeah, okay, so small ones. Okay, so the other storyline that I which was the other major storyline of the, of, the, of the show, was the Canfields and Minnie and Mr. Landis. You know, it's, it's the, I have to say, as a person of color myself, as a Black person who loves this show, is a hearty and loves this show, I have to say how impressed I am with the stories they're giving the Canfields. They're showing all of them as being multi-dimensional, multi-layered characters. Joseph may be a man of the Lord, but he has flaws that he admits fully. Um, she's not perfect either. She's trying to work through her issues also. They've had a hard life, which they've, they've they kind of alluded to. Um, Cooper is having growing pains. I just think it's, they're doing such a great job. I, I'm, just, I'm just very, I'm very, I mean, I'm very impressed. I'm very impressed. And Natasha and Viv and all the kids, they do such a great job portraying these characters. Um, and they're showing, and, I, and I've been saying this for daytime TV, I feel like when calls, I, of all places, when calls the heart of the Hallmark Channel to me is doing it, they're showing, for me, Black love realized that these two are in it for the long haul. They love each other. They admire each other. They support each other. They call each other out. Um, Elizabeth was funny. Oh my goodness! The kind of couple of scenes, but she's like, "I'd like to invite you over to dinner." She's like, "Really?" I was laughing. And when she came back later, she was like, "So how'd it go?" It went, it went really well. I'm so sorry. No, like it really went well. Like she was so shocked because of Mr. Lannis's bristleness. Um, but that whole sequence, that whole scene, both those scenes, Natasha killed it. Um, the guy who plays Landis did too. But I would say Natasha. The way Minnie just just did it. She was like, she can she conveyed that trepidation of trying to overcome this thing. Like I'm going, I'm going. When the line of I'm going to invite a man over for dinner that I don't even like, that I don't like at all. You know that I hate. That I don't like at all. But it's like she like he just that it's oh because her baby got hurt because of him, and she was not and she's not having it. But she was going to try to overcome her feelings. And that takes a strong person, because I'll tell you right now, I, 
I have, there's some people I have forgiven for things. I'm forgiveness is always what you want to do. I'm human. We sip some of my coffee. <laughs> I've forgiven everyone, but I've forgiven some people. And it's always, it always be, it should always be a goal. Forgiveness always be a goal, right? And a forgiveness, like she said, it's not really for him, it's for her. She has to get over this for herself because she's carrying it. What a great message. Most things in life are about you so you don't hold it in or weigh you down. It's to help lift you up. I just, and you know how that dinner was going to go. And the fact that he was a music teacher, who knew? And to see with him and Angela playing a piano was wonderful. And, if, and then when he went to Elizabeth later, it was like, I've been reminded. I went, and again, it's very timely. I did the same thing. I, I held in my creative side and I went to corporate for a while. And by the end, I was not happy of what, who I was becoming. And they, he said the same thing. And so he forgot, he's like, he went, we went for a job that was every day. And I totally, a steady job, I totally got that. And now I do this for you guys and more. I'm so glad I do that. But I understand exactly what he was saying. Sometimes you go for the steady, straight and narrow because it sounds good. Um, but you have to follow your heart. And his heart is, is teaching music. And he's good at it, apparently. And so I, I love that message. There were so many, there were so many good messages in the show. So people who said they're not going to watch the show, if you're not watching it, well, you're not watching me, then if you're not watching it, you're missing out. Um, if you're watching, you know what I'm talking about. This show does have great, great messages. And of course, the race that happened. Um, and uh, and <laughs> the, the horse and the bike. Um, and it was funny because the bike was Lee's, the horse was hers. She even mentions, it's about me at some level, blah, blah. I'm like, no. And they're doing this whole thing with Lucas and Nathan, like they're making them frenemies still. So it's kind of interesting to see how this goes. But the fact that Nathan, he won, of course, but that Lucas wasn't a sour grapes person, that he was just like, you know what? I love you. And the thing is, they mentioned marriage at the end. I wonder how you guys feel about that. It talks about just, you know, if I were to marry, that is cute little sequence at the end with that. I'm like, oh, they're actually mentioning that. Interesante, as we say in Spanish. So they're getting there. So anyways, I just thought, overall, great episode. Wonderful episode. Um, as, we, as we're heading halfway through the season. Um, and great messages. Again, great messages. And this one felt like an, like an, an old-timey. Wait, oh, sorry, I was the first long-time fans. I know we've been in for a long time, but I love it. All right, so that is my view. That's my reaction. Um, we're keeping getting all these reactions to the show. I love this show very much. Uh, everybody have a great day today or whenever you're watching, a great evening, however whenever you're watching this. Um, your hearties are the best. You are. We're part of this wonderful big family. And I will talk to you next time.